So, so let's talk about test definitions, I guess. So if anyone is interested, there's a project that I'm trying to sort of coordinate here that is going to, uh, I, I, what I'm trying to do is, is encourage the community, the HTM community. I used to have a, I used to have a black marker here. There it is. I'm trying to encourage the HTM community to build one of these three column networks. Okay, and, and if you watched the, uh, the recent video we did, was it yesterday? No, no, it's two days ago, Wednesday, when I was in the office with Jeff, and we talked about this being like equivalent to layer four, and I think, was it 6A, 6A, I think? Communication this way, communication that way, input this way, um, out, output that way, and this being an object pooling layer, so this is, this is, gonna, this is gonna identify an object, this is a location layer, and this is what we call a sensory layer. It's a sensory. So this is gonna have mini columns, this is gonna have grid cell bumps, grid cells, and this is gonna have static object, not static, um, um, persistent, I would say, over time, persistent, stable, stable is the word, stable object representations here. So this is gonna move very quickly. There's gonna be a lot of jumps and patterns here as input comes in. This is gonna move very quickly. This is, as we're attending an object, it's gonna be stable. Um, so, so this incorporates two papers, what we call the, the columns paper and then the columns plus paper. The columns paper defines sort of this space and the columns plus paper defines, defines this um, or describes the mechanisms that we think are in place within these, these systems. And so what I'm trying to encourage here with this object recognition project is to do really, really simple um, 2D object recognition so, so, th in a, so that we can define an object space. Um, so I'm gonna call this an object space and an object can exist in it. And I'm gonna actually give this you know, an X and a Y dimension Okay, and, and we're gonna have points in, in this space that we can define with X comma Y. So very discrete space, and each one of these locations in the space may have a feature. Let's just call this feature A. Maybe you can see feature A over here, and there's a, maybe a feature B over here. So you can have features at these spaces. And the idea being that um, we, we wanna try and create one of these columnar structures with three layers that when given sensory input from this object space can identify what object is being sensed. So we'll have like a, a library of, of objects. So this, this is maybe object one right here. That's how it's defined. And, but we'll also have a library of them. There'll be two, three, four, five, and we'll label them and they'll look like things. You know, I'll have, we already have some of this done defined, um, but then the task will be for uh, an intelligent agent to um, have an opportunity to train on these objects. So we'll basically hand them the labeled objects and say, here, here's all the objects in your, in, that could possibly in this, be in this space. Do what you need to do to train on them. And then the test would be to grab an object out of the space that they trained on, load it into the object space, and then give them one location to place the agent and ask it what's the object. If it knows it, it wins. You know, that's the, that's the goal immediately. If it knows it immediately with one touch, great. But then if it doesn't, we, we give it a movement path. We're gonna initially predefine the movement path. It's probably just gonna be a randomly predefined movement path. Um, yeah, the object pool is meant to be layer two, three. That's correct, catch 64. Um, and so, then, then we'll allow, you know, we'll give every agent, every competitor or whatever, um, the, give it the same movement path through the space and see how many touches it takes, how many senses it takes over time to identify what object in the library it's touching. So I want to create a test like that with, and the, and the um, you know, the motivation behind this is not to create a puzzle or a benchmark that no one else can solve because that's not what I'm trying to do. I think I would structure it to totally differently if I was trying to create a benchmark that only HTM would be good at. That's not what I'm trying to do. What I'm trying to do is create a 
a puzzle, a, a, a challenge for you in the community that are interested in building HTM systems to solve this. So here's, the, here's an even closer look at the idea. So as I say, we're in this object space. Here is the location that I've given your agent. So let's pretend that you've trained on all of it however we've decided to train on it. Here's the location you get. So, so the challenge that we're gonna define here is you're at like X, Y, and we're gonna give every agent four sensors. I know this is sort of strict, but we're gonna give you a, a north sensor, an east sensor, a south sensor, and a west sensor. And the, the idea being, I mean, we could start off with just one, right? But that seems, that's sort of boring. <laughs> let's, let's, let's try it with, with multiple sensors. Because the idea being that each one of these sensors, each one of them, is going to be represented as a cortical column with these layers. So the sensory input is going to be set fed into this layer. It's going to activate some mini columns, which is going to help identify where it is or all the places in the space it might be. And, as, and, and this will select all the possible objects that it's learned so far, the union of them. So, and, and we, maybe we get, we pop out, you know, object A, you know, 90% object B, 8%, whatever. So we should hopefully, maybe, I'm going to try to get, you know, probabilities of this after each touch. Each one of these is going to have its own model of a column with all this mechanism happening all at the same time. So they're all going to get different sensory input. This is going to have its over here. And then to pull it all together, and this is like the pie in the sky vision, pull it all together, we're going to have these layers all talking to each other, voting because that really is what is gonna make one touch be powerful enough to recognize an object. So that's the full pie in the sky vision of this 2D object recognition project. So let me look at some 